I cannot tell you how many tab cons I've broken using an impact driver to put them in the wall, but Normally I would never ever put fine threads into plastic, but I had a bunch of them, so guess I'm turning this wrench a whole bunch of times. When you look at this thing just right from the front, it is absolutely <laughs> crooked. This is the first step of my compressed air system. I've got this filter here. I don't remember exactly what it did or what the proper name is. And I've got this filter here right after it, which gets um, moisture and humidity out of the air. The air supply for the system is going to come from a standalone compressor, and it's going to hook in here with a short bit of hose, sort of like this. Air is going to exit the filters through this PEX fitting. There's going to be plastic pipe going up, and then it's going to start going this way across the ceiling. I designed these 3D printed hangers that I'm going to put on my joists to hold the PEX. They have this little nub here that can be cut down in case you want to make the fit a little looser or tighter, depending. My joists are actually pretty darn thick, so it looks like I'm going to be taking pretty much all that nub off, at least for this joist. You know, it's kind of funny, I designed these to have a uh, countersink on the outside of this hole, and then I turn around and use screws like this. Even with that notch completely cut off, this is still pretty darn tight on the joist. And this opening here is 1.6 inches. I guess that's a good problem to have. Glad my uh, joists are nice and beefy. Starting to add the pipes is definitely a part of the project that I've been looking forward to for a while. Please stay. All right, do whatever. I'm going to leave those zip ties a little loose right now. I'll come back and tighten them later. At this point, I have my main run of pipe towards the workshop pretty much complete. I have these hangers positioned about four feet apart. Four feet apart is just a number I chose, uh, making it up as I go along. I have five of these air fittings and I need to choose places on the ceiling to put them. I put some wires on the ends of these clamps so I can stick them to the ceiling and move them around in different spots to really get a feel of where I might want air. But what's great about PEX, and probably the number one reason that made me choose it, is the fact that if I have a pipe already on the ceiling and I change my mind, It's that easy to go back and put a fitting somewhere. In the process of uh, walking around my shop, I saw this big ass spider and I trapped him in a uh, peanut M&M jar. Oh man, look at him go. His fangs are so big, he's walking with them. And he's trying to stay in frame as I'm rotating the jar. This is like the most photogenic spider ever. <laughs> oh. Later, dude. I probably spent a solid 20 minutes walking around, placing these where I thought they would be most useful. Eventually, they did wind up just being in the corners. <laughs> me bonking my head into these things sort of gave me some, some nuance in saying, oh, hey, I need to look out for where hoses are going to hang from. And if I've got a hose like this, I'd probably rather have it here than hung over here where I'm going to walk through. It's not impossible to come up with nuance like that when you're sitting in front of a piece of paper. But I will say it's way easier to figure it out when you're standing in the real thing you're working on. This is a cool moment. I've got all the pipes installed. I've got all the fittings put in. 
and I'm ready to pressurize the system for the first time. Right now I only have this cheap pigtail hose to use, so if you hear any hissing, I swear it's coming from here and not from my uh, plumbing work. Well, all right, I think that ominous crocodile hissing type sound you just heard was the system filling up with compressed air. And it has been a few seconds and I have not heard anything horrible. Cool. I want to give the system a test, but the only quick connect hose that I own at this time is already in use pressurizing it. I have a workaround just for testing purposes, but it's definitely not anything to uh, use long term. So that music montage definitely stuck out like a sore thumb, but uh, when I go back and find that all my dialogue and camera work for a sequence was just uh, unhinged dog shit, I pretty much don't have a choice. <laughs> On the bottom of compressors like this, there's usually a valve. I replaced it with this fitting that lets me drain through this hose instead. Moisture from the air finds its way inside the tank when the compressor is running, and it eventually condenses into liquid and falls to the bottom of the tank. Something you need to do periodically is drain the air out to expel the water. This is a chore that I am very, very bad at doing. This hose here is hopefully going to make that habit a little easier to keep up on. I 3D printed a bunch of these clips to hold that tubing onto the PEX. That pipe from the drain is going into this valve, and the exit is going off to my sump pump. Or more accurately, it's gonna spray into the sump pump basin. This valve is located in a convenient spot in my shop. That's gonna make it way more likely for me to develop the habit of coming over here every once in a while and giving the compressor a quick drain, as opposed to me having to walk over to the compressor frequently and drain it from the bottom. I left myself a little extra hose, just in case I wanna move this valve around. But after all, it is attached to my pull-up bar, so that's certainly part of the shop that gets a lot of frequent use. <laughs> That's all water that I do not want at the bottom of my tank. This system I have here is going to make it really easy to keep up on draining the tank whenever I need to. I'm curious to see if my compressor has the ability to rupture the pipe. This particular pipe is advertised as being able to hold 100 PSI at 180 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 PSI at 73 degrees Fahrenheit. It seems my compressor only wants to go up to about 135. And last I checked, 135 is less than 150. So this claim is bullshit. If I had to bet, I'd say they probably adjusted this shutoff sensor at the factory to be around 135. I like it the way it is, so I'm not going to adjust it for the test, but I will try this. The methodology of this test is simple. I have my blast resistant box. I have a piece of PEX hooked up to a hose. I'm going to plug this hose in and then slowly dial up the pressure with this regulator until I get a result or more likely nothing happens. For all testing, I'm wearing earplugs, earmuffs, safety glasses, and I'm holding a piece of plywood in front of my nuts. I think I legally have to say don't try this at home, although I am in a home and I'm trying it, so I guess I'm just a, a great big hypocrite. I am unsurprised that the pipe held up to 150 PSI. It is rated to be able to do that. One variable that I do not have control over is the temperature of the air that was going into the pipe. Temperature is a variable that I'm interested to test someday in the future, but right now I'm going to simulate some failure modes which are a bit easier to control. Like what if you were incautious while installing the pipe and it has a crease in it? Damn it, I'm going to get this thing to break. All right, if that doesn't explode, I don't know how I'm going to make this test work. Yeah, this one's just leaking out the sides. 
but it seems it chose not to fail by fracturing. It just chose to leak. For the second test, I have a fresh piece of pipe here, and I want to know what happens if there's a nick or some damage in the plastic. Right there, I was trying to be conservative and take off a small amount. The plastic was so thin, I stuck the gouge right through it. Two things I had not planned on. One, doing a test at high temperature. Two, admitting defeat. sounded like the result. Dude. Well, it sounded like a result, but uh, I guess it wasn't. This is very warm to the touch. I don't have a thermometer with me right now, but this is uncomfortable to hold for an extended period of time. I would say my testing is probably about 90% goofing around, 10% rigorous science, so take it with a grain of salt. My overall conclusion is that this material resisted the temperatures and pressures that commonly exist in my shop, and in order to get it to fail, I had to introduce scenarios that were just not reasonable. One parting thought I have about PEX in general, it seems like the number one thing I hear people complaining about is the price of the tool. I think this thing was like 45 bucks, and the tubing to cover my entire shop was like 30, and I think all the fittings all together might have been like another 100. So my system cost roughly $175. To buy the pipe alone to make this out of black iron would have been about $240. And I saved myself a couple hundred bucks doing it like this. So, in the immortal words of Forrest Gump, that's all I have to say about that.